Okay, so it's not quite as easy as the title makes it sound, but it is pretty much that straightforward. We're going to talk about how you can add atmosphere to your photos using really just one slider. We are going to be doing a bit of masking. Don't, don't worry about it. It's going to be super easy, super straightforward. We're going to dive into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each week and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, is no different. We're going to dive into Lightroom Classic. We're going to look at a handful of photos. We're going to look at how you can use this technique on a variety of different genres, actually. Landscape, even portrait, a lot of different things. And how you can use the same technique in a few different ways to achieve different kinds of results. And essentially, we are adding atmosphere to our photos. Now this works best if you are already adding to an existing feeling within the photo. So I'm talking mist, fog, that kind of feeling. It doesn't actually have to be misty or foggy in your photo, but if you can imagine that it might have been, it's gonna be a lot easier to use this technique to actually create that feeling rather than taking a beautiful summer's day landscape photo and then trying to make it misty and foggy. We could do that, but there's a lot more photo manipulation involved in that. And this is really more photo editing rather than photo manipulation. We're just trying to, we're trying to accentuate what's already in the photo, but we can also use this technique for some other things as well, including portraiture stuff, wildlife stuff, and even actually adding things like sunlight and a little bit more of a, a different feel like that to a brighter, sunnier photo. Let's dive in. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to stop waffling. Let's get involved. So for example, we're going to start with this photo here. This was taken down by the seafront, as you can obviously see. And we've got this very kind of bleak, minimalist, foggy, atmospheric photo. However, you'd probably be surprised to learn that actually, if I show you the original unedited photo, which is this, this is actually what it looked like. So I've removed the two people who are sitting at the end here, and I've really leaned into that bleaker, more sort of foggy, misty feel. The main way we've done this is through masking and using dehaze. Now, dehaze is super powerful. I very rarely use it in the way it was intended, I guess, which is where you are kind of punching through something like clouds or something like that to get a bit more detail. I very rarely use it like that. I often use it. Negative dehaze gives you situations like this. Let's look at that. So what I'm going to do is actually delete all of these masks, delete all masks, and we're gonna go from here. So I've just edited the photo, I've removed the people, I've done a little bit of a sort of color grade, I've just increased the exposure a little bit, which helps anyway, but you can see there's no actual mist or fog, but it feels like there could have been, right? And that is what we're gonna do. So let's start off with a linear gradient, which we're gonna bring in from the sky, bring that down like so. And actually what I'm gonna do, as well as dehaze, we're gonna use a couple of other sliders here and there as well. So I'm gonna bring the contrast down a little bit because with fog or with mist, that is something that would happen, right? You would have a lower contrast. We're also going to bring that dehaze down. So we're using negative dehaze here. You can see if I bring it all the way down, we get this really strong effect. It's too much, and we need to build this up in a more realistic sort of way. So I'm going to bring it down to something like that. If you look at the mask, I turn that off for a second and back on. We're already starting to get that feeling, right? Next up, we could do a radial gradient. Now, We've done a sort of general gradient mask across the photo coming down from the top. This time we want to do a, a sort of more targeted one, I suppose, across the middle here. Now, same sort of thing. We're going to bring that contrast down just a little bit. And then the dehaze is where the magic's going to happen. We're going to bring that down. Not too much. We don't want to go too crazy with it because we'll start, we'll start causing ourselves some problems. Let's go for something like something like that. Again, if I turn this mask off, which I can do by just coming up to the mask panel here, just clicking this little eye icon, and then click it again to show it. But if I turn it off, you can see how much of a difference that mask is now making. Let's create another new mask. Let's go for a brush. Now, if we're looking through the fog, the mist, the atmosphere, right, it's going to get thicker the further away we're looking. Does that make sense? Because we're looking through more of it. So this horizon line, we want to really we want to really fog that up. So I'm using a brush now. I'm using a reasonably low flow. 50 is fine. Let's just paint on here, right? We want to get that horizon line. And with a lower flow, we can actually build this up. So we can paint over that horizon line a bit. 
but the more we paint over it, the more we're adding to the mask. Then I can just add a little bit more kind of closer, but it's not as thick because I'm not painting over it again. Let's just make sure we've got the same sort of level on the right here as on the left. Lovely. And again, I'm just going to add a little bit of a mask to the top here, something like that. But again, it's, it's a little bit, a little bit lower opacity mask because we're using that lower flow. So that's good. Let's do the same thing again. Let's bring the contrast down a little bit then come down here to dehaze where we're going to bring that down like so. Look at that. That's exciting. Let's turn that mask off and then back on. Yeah, I really like that. I really like that. So if we turn all the masks off now, which we can do by clicking up here, this little eye icon, that's what it looks like without any of these masks. And then this is where we've taken it, just using negative dehaze and a little bit of bringing that contrast down as well. So before and after, look how much extra kind of atmosphere we've added to the photo. Now you could go further with this. You could keep, you know, keep going with that horizon line. I'll show you, for example, exactly what I'm talking about. Let's just really paint that in like so. I'll show you exactly what I mean. We're going to bring that dehaze down and you start to actually get rid of that horizon. Line. If you wanted to go that far, you could. I think without that is actually better. It's a little bit more, a little bit more natural. You might even want to go in and actually reduce the dehaze on this post here, depending on what you want to do. Or you might even want to go in, do another radial gradient a bit like this and just bring that dehaze down so that you've got a little bit more, a little bit more fog kind of or atmosphere on these rocks here. That's entirely up to you. I guess you uh, season to taste with this kind of thing, right? How far do you want to go? But again, before and after, we've added a lot of atmosphere to this photo. And it worked particularly well because it was already a fairly atmospheric feeling photo. It just didn't actually have any mist or fog. Okay, so we're jumping over to another photo now. This is a photo of a Robin, a fairly close up one taken with the Sigma 100 to 400 millimeter lens, which was really fun to play around with. Now, what we're going to be doing with this is actually just changing the background a touch. This is something I like to do with portraits. And also, you know, this is in a lot of ways a portrait of a Robin right? It's a wildlife shot, but it is kind of like a portrait. So we're going to actually going to go ahead and do a radial gradient here. We're going to just pop this over the robin. You might have seen me do this in other videos, other editing videos. I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do here. So mask five, we're going to right click intersect mask with, and I'm going to click select background. And that means that now it's only going to apply that radial gradient onto the background. So if you look now, Lightroom has actually worked out where the subject is, where the background is. So we've got the radial gradient now, as you can see with the red, only applying behind our Robin friend. And we can do a similar thing we were just doing before, but it's going to give a slightly different feel. If I go ahead and bring the dehaze down, we just change the look of the background a bit. So all we're doing is just changing the look of that background. So that means that when we don't have the mask applied, if we take a look now, I'll turn that off. It's a darker background, which can be great and often is something I'll go for. But with the mask applied, we kind of lighten that background a bit, maybe make everything gel a little bit better. It depends on the kind of look that you're going for. Essentially, we're almost bringing the contrast down of the background. We could even lighten it a little bit if we wanted to as well. And then we have a slightly more contrasty Robin and it gives a nice bit of separation. This is something that again, you might not want to use because you might want to have a darker background, have the nice bright subject that works really well as well. But sometimes, do you know what? Sometimes I love the look of something like that. It just looks good. I like the separation it gives and I like having a little bit of brightness behind my subject there as well. In the past, I would have lent towards the darkness, but maybe I'm in a different, maybe in a different place with this now. And I like using it for this kind of thing. Okay, we're going to jump to this photo now, which is a very different feel, right? This is a sunny day, much nicer light, less kind of bleak, less, you know, misty and foggy. But we can still use the same effect to create a bit more atmosphere in the photo. So with this one, what we're going to do is actually go ahead and draw a linear gradient mask from the right. That's because the sunlight is very clearly coming in from the right. And we're going to accentuate that a little bit. We're going to use that for our atmosphere. So the way we're really approaching these photos is what is creating the atmosphere in the photo? Is it kind of the bleakness, the fog, the mist? Is it the sunlight, right? The directional sunlight? 
And we're accentuating whatever that is by using negative dehaze for the most part. So I've drawn in this linear gradient coming in from the right. So that means it's, it's getting softer as it comes into the photo. Same direction as the sunlight. We can now go ahead and just bring the dehaze down. And as we do, look at that. We've kind of created this feeling of the sunlight rushing into the photo. If I turn this off and back on, it's not kind of a crazy effect, but it does add a little bit more of an atmosphere, right? A little bit more of a, a, an atmospheric feeling to the photo. And I will do this a lot with directional sunlight. I love to accentuate that with a bit of negative dehaze. So we've kind of used it on a sunny photo, on a bleak photo, a very gray photo. We've used it with wildlife. Let's just do one portrait photo as well. Now I won't lie to you, this is a very old photo. I took this years ago and I probably would have taken it a little bit differently now, but we're gonna go ahead and try something anyway. So let's start with a radial gradient on this one. Let's do a massive, a massive oval like that coming in from the top. And again, let's bring the contrast down a little bit. Let's bring the dehaze down a little bit, something like that. And with this one, we might wanna actually do something like bring the sharpness down, maybe the texture down, maybe the clarity down, not too much. Otherwise it starts to look a little bit, a little bit weird. Maybe let's bring the exposure up a little bit and let's warm that up. And essentially we've created this kind of soft, and if we bring the dehaze down even more, this really soft kind of warm light above our subject there in the forest. Oh, I love that. I love the look of that. And if I turn that off and then back on, look at the difference that's making. It's just creating this atmospheric feeling. There's so many different ways to apply this, but the main part of it always comes back to negative dehaze. Negative dehaze just works extremely well. For this kind of stuff, I love to use it, all kinds of different photos. I'm a big, big fan of it. I think it helps with creating a certain look for the kind of photo you wanna go for. Again, it's all about using it, you know, sparingly, using it the correct amount that feels right for you. There is no right and wrong answer. It's just what feels good to you. I like to try and hold back so it still feels like it's natural, right? I'm just accentuating what's already there rather than, I'm just accentuating what's already there rather than really changing the whole photo up to just create a completely different looking thing. But I'd love to know, is this something that you already use? Do you already dabble with a bit of negative dehaze? Do you use it for something else that I've not thought of in this video? I'd love to know. Let me know down in the comments. That's always super interesting. As always, of course, you can check out a full list of all the kit we use for these videos, for all our stuff really, down in the description if you wanna go check all that out. Don't forget to like and subscribe because there's new stuff all the time. I will see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.